You might know about the multi-store model, but I think there are four things you might be surprised to learn. So in this video, I'm going to explain four things you don't know about the multi-store model, and that if you add these in your exams or in your essays, I think you might just impress your examiners. All right, the first thing to mention is, do you know that there is a store within the short-term store? It's called the rehearsal buffer. Now, Atkinson and Schifrin propose that this is a a uh, temporary store of information where this is where we put the stuff we're trying to rehearse and go over in our minds. So imagine if uh, someone told you, hey, go to the store, can you buy me eggs, milk, and some bread? And so they're going, eggs, milk. You put the, that information, eggs, milk, bread, into your rehearsal buffer and you go over it again and again. But if that person gives you too much information, too many things to remember, you're going to overwhelm your uh, rehearsal buffer and it's going to fill up and you won't be able to remember everything. So this is what ha this is called displacement and it's a first in first out principle. So as the buffer fills in, fills up, sorry, the old information is dropped. If it hasn't been transferred to the long term, as the information fills up in the buffer. So uh, Atkinson and Schifrin use the metaphor of a garbage can, right? If when the garbage can gets full, you put something in, something else has to fall out to make room for it. Second thing you might not have known about the multi-store model is that it wasn't the first multi-store model of memory. I think that credit goes to Murdoch a year earlier in 1967 when he proposed his multi-store model. But actually we could trace it back even further to William James, the father of American psychology, as uh, er, late as late or early, the late 1800s, he was proposing the idea of memory being a separate store. It's a long-standing debate in psychology. Is our memory one unitary structure or is it divided into separate components? Some psychologists even argue why why do we even care if the memory is in different stores or not? We should focus on the processes and specific types of memory that would be far more helpful. This approach is archaic. But even Murdoch, a year earlier in 67, was basing his ideas on Atkinson and Schifrin's earlier ideas. And so the cognitive revolution of the 50s and 60s was really this pool of ideas and new findings of cognitive science and experimental studies on memory where everyone uh, took all these findings and interpret interpreted them. Atkinson, Atkinson and Schifrin, what they did was combine them in one cohesive framework. You might also be surprised to learn there's quite a bit of contradictory evidence to the multi-store model. Yeah, it's got heaps of studies that support it, but let's look at three major ones that contradict these findings, and I'll talk about these more in a future video. Number one, the idea that information always has to go from our short-term to our long-term store is challenged by the case study of KF. KF had a brain injury. He had virtually no short-term memory capacity, but his long-term memory was basically undamaged. And so this suggests that maybe our information doesn't have to go into the short-term store before it gets into the long-term store. Levels of processing studies suggest that it's not just rehearsal that helps transfer information from short term to long term. It's actually how deep we process the information. The more we deal with uh, process information, the more we can connect it to what we know already, the deeper the encoding of the information, right? How we process it when it comes into our mind, that's also going to affect the transfer to long term store. So that's a critique of this over, uh, over, overly, fo overly focused. It's a critique of the it's a critique of too much focus on rehearsal in the original multi-store model. Other studies have also challenged the recency effects explanation of the multi-store models. The recency effect is when we tend to remember the things that we've just heard, but they've found recency effects for things that people have already had in their long-term memory, like names of US presidents or sports teams that they've played earlier in the season. Right? So this is stuff that was in the long-term memory, but the recency effect still occurs. So how can that suggest the short-term store? How can that show that the recency effect is information coming from the short-term store when this information would already be in the long-term store? Now, if you don't fully understand this, I'm gonna take my time in a future video and explain it in more detail. Also blog posts in the description to help. Uh, the fourth thing you might not know about the multi-store model, at the time of making this video, the two Richards, Richard Atkinson and Richard Schifrin, are still going. Um, they were in, very young when they proposed this model. Uh, Schifrin only 26, I believe, and Atkinson in his late 30s. Last were going into their 70s and 90s, I think. Uh, Richard Atkinson is 92. David Sch uh, Richard Schifrin is 79, I believe, still both involved in universities. Um, this, Schif this Richard still teaching in Indiana U University, so um, kudos. I read Atkinson gave um, about $5 million to the University of California at San Diego. So pff, apparently there might be some money being made in model memory. So I'm going to go and try to come up with my own. I hope that was helpful. Some facts here to put in information in your exams and essays. But remember, the most important thing is you can diagram this basic uh, model. You can remember it and you can explain it clearly and then go for those extra details at the end.